Thank you for tuning in. Today we're going to have a look at the portal axles and what needs to be done to have these guys fitted under a TJ of the intro. Hi guys, Robin here. Thank you for tuning in. Cup of coffee. Ah, that's great. Um, the past week, the progress haven't been so great in my garage. Uh, I got the Corona stuff, uh, so I've been living on the couch for a week with zero energy, but now I'm back in biz. I had two of these vaccine shots, but I still got it, so I guess the symptoms was uh, much uh, less for me, so I guess, I, guess uh, I got away better than without the vaccine shots, but that's another story. I know some of you don't th believe this crap and some of you really do, so, uh, but let's uh, continue and focus on the TJ and Jeep stuff over here on this channel. The other day I cut the frame in half, so I'm gonna make a new rear frame, I'm gonna keep the front, I'm gonna grind off all the brackets here outside, and then I'm gonna get it in again. When I cut the frame in half, this is what I found inside. Look at that. So much rust, it's crazy. Anyway, here's the portal axles. Let's talk about these guys today. This is the setup they are fitted to the Volvo TGB11, which is the vehicle I got these axles out of. It's a military vehicle from the Swedish Army with the portal house. So as you can see, there is a straight axle normally, which in normal cases, the wheel is centered on the axle tube, but on a portal axle, it's offset. So the wheel center is down here. That means uh, in the in the center of the wheel, it's up, it's under the carrier, under the differential. Gets a lot, a lot of ground clearance that way. Anyway, we're not gonna go into what a portal axle is. I'm gonna today explain how I'm gonna fit these under the TJ because there's a big problem with these axles. As you can see, here's the rear axle. The pumpkin is centered a little bit offset from the center to the passenger side or to the right side. That's not a big issue uh, for a TJ since the output shaft on the TJ is centered. There will be a slight angle on the uh, drive shaft, but that's not a big deal. The big problem is the front axle. As you can see, the pinion and the differential is fitted on the passenger side, the right side. And on the TJ, the output shaft from the transfer case is on the driver's side over there. There is some ways to solve this, to get these axles fitted under the TJ. One way is to keep the pumpkin on the, on the passenger side and just get another transfer case for the TJ. For example, a Dana 300. But even if you do that, you have still a problem, which is the third member, the differential, is located very close to the center of the axle. It needs to be more offset from the center towards the right of the vehicle or to the left of the vehicle. Otherwise, the drive shaft is going to hit the oil pan, either the oil pan on the engine or on the automatic transmission. I know this has been done by a guy in the US. He fitted these axles, as, as is, on a TJ with a Dana 300. But when I mocked these axles up under my TJ, and I put these axles where it needs to be, there was no way it could be done. So either this guy offset his whole axle towards the right of the vehicle, so he uh, got, you know, the axle is offset from, like, from the vehicle itself, from the frame, so it's the the tire sticks out more on the right side to give clearance for the drive shaft. Or he did not have much of up travel. I don't know how he did it. I think that's quite old. I think that thread was like uh, 10 or 15 years old. 
Uh, I think it was on Pirate or uh, Jeep forums, I don't know. But when I measured, when I mocked it up, when I had the vehicle in here and the drivetrain and everything still in the frame, it was not possible. Another reason for me not getting the Dana 300 is because I live in Sweden and the Dana 300s are really, really rare to find here. We're talking about $800 to $1,000 for a Dana 300. And so even if I found it, I still have the problem with the clearance to the oil pan. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna keep the Jeep drivetrain as is. So here's the engine, automatic and transfer case. Output shaft in the rear is centered and on the to the to the front it's offset to the pass uh, sorry to the driver's side to the left so i'm gonna keep this as is to make it more simpler for me i'm gonna keep the whole drive train and i'm gonna move the pumpkin to the driver's side instead and how do you move the pumpkin to the driver's side well you could flip the axle upside down and drill a new hole for the actuator for the differential locker on the other side. But doing so, you still have the problem with the differential being too close to the center of the axle. So the drive shaft will still hit the oil pan and everything like that. So, what could be done? Well, let's have a look on the rear axle over here. The rear axle mounting flange with distance are wider than the front axle. And that's because on the front you have the steering knuckles. So the distance from the mounting surface here to the wheel mounting surface are wider, bigger, longer, whatever. That means the front axle housing is shorter than the rear ha axle housing. Does that make sense? I hope so. By having different uh, width of the axle housings, you can put on the larger steering knuckles here, the wider steering knuckles, and you will still have the same wheel to wheel mounting surface distance, front and rear. Okay. <clears throat> so, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use the rear axle housing, this one, and this one is a couple of inches longer, or wider, is the correct word, than the front. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take the rear axle, I'm gonna flip it, not flip it, I'm gonna rotate it, so it is, it's positioned on the front. Okay, and then I'm gonna shorten the axle housing to the correct width to match the front axle. And I'm not gonna shorten it the same amount of distance on the right side and on the left side or vice versa. I'm gonna do all the shortened cut on this side. What, that, what, 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 what will happen then is I will get the pumpkin further out, closer to the wheel. And when I rotate this one, it's gonna be on the driver's side. You follow? And what that means is, I'm gonna cut the axle tube, weld it all together on this side. And I need a new axle shaft because that length does not exist for these axles. And probably that's about it. Then I have a front axle with a driver's side differential that's more offset from the center line than it is today. And that will provide clearance enough for the drive shaft and for me to using the stock Jeep transfer case. Another problem that will happen by doing so is I don't have a rear axle anymore because I'm gonna use the rear axle I have to make it as a front axle and the front axle Banyu housing will not be used. But 
These axles come these axles come from a Volvo TGB11. It's a two-axle military vehicle. These vehicles are also available as a three-axle um vehicle so it's all it's like totally the same but with two rear axles instead and the third axle in that vehicle it's pumpkin it's almost almost centered in the rear so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna try to find the third axle from one of these cars i'm gonna move all of this stuff because it's the same it's flanged it's, it's bolted so i'm gonna take the outers i'm gonna take uh, the differential here and then a uh, locking mechanism things like that move it to that housing i'm gonna need new axle shafts for it because the length on the axle shaft that i have front or rear it will not fit because uh, on that third axle the pumpkin is more centered so the the length of the axle shafts are different <clears throat> so that's the plan um, I don't know if you followed me in my explanation here I've been thinking a lot of all the alternatives available uh, flip the axle get the Dana 300 tra transfer case and you know whatever maybe even flip the uh, 231 Jeep transfer case upside down <sighs> you know but I think the best way is to actually convert the rear axle to a front axle to get the pumpkin closer to the tire and make clearance for the axle shaft. Oh, sorry, the drive shaft. So the plan right now is to disassemble both of these axles totally. I have started, you know, I have removed knuckles here um don't bother about this stuff this is by done by the previous owner this one as well the truss don't don't bother it's not gonna be used in a way i'm gonna make new stuff but i'm gonna disassemble the axles remove the outers remove the differential locking mechanism and everything so it's completely empty housings and then i'm gonna start with the shortening job by cutting the axle tubes well it all together yeah that's the plan for this week i would say to start with the axles and everything like that convert them and uh, try to source a new third axle that i'm gonna use as a rear axle and so on now the coffee is cold again but uh Please like and subscribe if you want to see more on this project with the portal axles under TJ and see you next time. Take care everyone. Bye.